spring of 2013, there were over 50 dead turtles found here at Misery Bay Provincial Park. They were by far mostly Blanding's turtles, which are an at-risk species here in Ontario, and the rest of them were painted turtles. As a biologist, I'm very interested in species at risk, and so these Blanding's turtles are classified as threatened in Ontario. They're one level lower than endangered. And to study them here at Misery Bay is really pretty exciting because this population has never been studied before. The situation is so unusual because we're within a provincial park, which is a protected area. There's no vehicles, which are a big threat to Blanding's turtles elsewhere in Ontario. All of their bodies were found, so we know that they weren't poached for food or for the pet trade. So it seems like the cause of this mortality is likely something natural. The first step in solving this mystery is to look for clues. And some of the major clues that we're going to get are from the remaining live turtles in the park. But this habitat is so large that it can be really hard to find them. So it's really thanks to my great field technician, Michael, who's out here every day with me tracking turtles and gathering data. That one here. When we find a turtle, we put a transmitter onto its shell. This allows us to routinely track it throughout the year. I now understand why they're called the wanderers. They walk and they walk and they walk through forest and they walk over rocks and up hills and down hills and they take me to a lot of places that I didn't expect to go to. And at times it's exhausting and even a little frustrating, but finding them at the end of all of that is very rewarding. I am looking at three suspected causes of death, predation, disease, and winter kill. When considering predation as a cause of death, the first thing that we need to do is identify the predators that are here at the park. One of the things that we're doing is we've got motion activated trail cameras that will take a picture of anything that passes by. In addition to that, we also have two foam decoy turtles that look convincingly like the real thing. And so we've set each one of these up with a trail camera. If something comes along, and tries to take it or prey on it, we'll get photos of that animal and we'll know what it is. When we collected these images, we discovered that otters, a known predator in other parts of Ontario, are indeed here at Misery Bay and could be the cause of some of these dead blandings. And even though the camera trap didn't catch whatever attacked the decoy, it's obvious that something was interested in it. So predation is something we're still looking at. The second hypothesis that we have is disease. A harmful pathogen called ranavirus has been devastating amphibian populations worldwide and has also recently been found in turtle populations in North America. We've found a lot of live turtles here at Misery Bay and so far we haven't found any that seem to be showing any symptoms or any reason to think that they're unhealthy. So at this point, it seems like it probably wasn't disease. The third hypothesis that we're exploring here at the park is winter kill. And this can be further broken down into freezing and lack of oxygen in the water. As reptiles, turtles are cold-blooded animals, or ectotherms, which means that they can't control their body temperature. They're reliant on their environment to do it for them. In the winter time, they go to extreme measures so that they can survive the winter. An ideal hibernation site for these turtles is somewhere that will contain water throughout the entire winter, if it's somewhere that freezes right from the top all the way to the bottom, the turtles will get caught in the ice and they won't be able to survive it. Something else that's really important for these turtles as they're overwintering is the water temperature. It needs to be very low so that they can maintain a reduced metabolic state and not use up all of their energy stores. And what we did before they went down is we put temperature data loggers on them, which are about the size of a dime and they just get glued right onto the turtle shell and then those record the temperature every three hours so we can get a very detailed profile of what it's really like under the ice where the turtles are. While turtles always spend a lot of time in the water, they're able to come up whenever they need to in the summertime to take gulps of air. But the ice in the winter prevents them from doing this. They only need a very small amount of oxygen and they're able to absorb this from the water that they are in. If they don't have access to it, they won't survive the winter. So it's 14.16 and 0 0.4 degrees Celsius. As of right now, we don't really know how lack of oxygen stands up as a cause of death. What we'll be doing is we'll be measuring the oxygen level in the water throughout the wetland where these turtles are overwintering. 
Considering our original hypotheses, and then looking at the evidence that we've gathered so far, we haven't solved the mystery of what caused this mass mortality yet. But we've narrowed it down a little bit, and we've come out with a lot of interesting information that we didn't know previously. Something that we were surprised by is we were expecting the turtles to nest in the beautiful sand dunes that are present here at the park. But they don't. They've traveled onto land, onto the Alvar, which is essentially flat limestone rock. There's cracks in the rock where substrate like soil has built up. That's where they're digging and laying their nests. And in such a unique habitat, this information is really exciting. As a biologist, you go in with a certain set of questions, and through answering those questions, you develop new ones, and it just keeps building upon itself, and that's what's really exciting about all of this.